the power of prayer, embracing God's presence and authority. In today's study, we'll explore the incredible gift of prayer, which connects us directly with God, affirms our identity as his children and empowers us with his authority. We will examine the importance of prayer, how to pray effectively, and reasons for unanswered prayers. Together, we'll discover how praying in the Spirit aligns us with God's will, allowing us to experience His kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Key points will include learning to pray, effective prayer, and overcoming obstacles to prayer, such as unbelief, pride, and unforgiveness. Join us as we deepen our understanding of this powerful gift, the power of prayer, embracing God's presence and authority. Want to know more? Hang around. Welcome. Welcome to Lions Roar 38 Ministries. Amos 38 tells us, The lion has roared, who will not fear or hear. The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy. My name is George Magalhães, and we are an apostolic ministry with a prophetic teaching edge. It is our passion, our mission to reignite, equip, and release Christ-like disciples, both locally and globally. We do that through our itinerant ministry, but as well as providing with resources just like this one to help you, to aid you in your God-given calling. Today, we have a fantastic topic bringing us to our main verse. And our main verse comes from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18. We're reading from the New King James Version. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hello, beauty. What a gorgeous guest I have here today. By the way, she's my wife, Sabrina. So Prophet Sabrina is here with us again today, wherever you're watching from the world. Hi, God bless you all. We have an amazing topic today, which is the power of prayer, embracing God's presence and authority. Before we get onto it, let me give you just a little uh, introduction of what we're going to be covering today. So in today's study, we'll be uncovering prayer as an incredible gift that connects us directly with our Heavenly Father. Through it, we communicate with God, affirm our identity as His children, and exercise the authority He has granted us. We will explore the significance of prayer, how to pray effectively, and why some prayers go unanswered. Mm. We'll also look at how praying in the Spirit aligns us with God's will, allowing us to experience His kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. We will be studying all of this within the following specific key points. And I'll say this once, within the following specific key points. It does sound like a lot, but it's not a lot. We'll be covering this on an introductory level. So listen up. The first specific important key point that we'll be covering is... Importance of prayer. Importance of prayer. The second one is learning to pray. The third one... Praying in and with the, with the Spirit, uh, and entitling Praying in the Spirit, Praying with the Spirit. Number four is Reasons for Unanswered Prayer, which we have uh, one, two, three, four, five mini uh, or subtopics it's to not, cover within, yes. within that topic itself. It's so not four, all, it's mini, like George said. Yes, so four reasons for unanswered prayer will include refusing to hear the truth, unbelief, willful stubbornness, unforgiveness, and presumption and pride. Then we have number five. Effective prayer. Effective prayer will include effective prayer begins with directing our hearts to the Father in Jesus' name. Effective prayer must come from a sincere heart. Effective prayer holds an unhesitant submission to God's sovereign will. Effective prayer must also be offered in faith. And finally, effective prayer must be accompanied with thanksgiving and praise. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Fire away. Fire away. <laughs> we start, right? Yep. 
All right. So we'll, um, right. That's right. Today we, today I'm excited about it because it's, you know, it's something that we do every day, co communicating with God prayer. Today we're excited to, about it into, it's a beautiful topic, isn't it? Of the power of prayer, which most of us know is essential part of our faith um, journey. Prayer plays a vital role in our relationship with God, helping us to connect deeply and affirm our identity as his children. Prayers. Um, so, uh, through prayer, prayer, we not only communicate with God, but we but also embrace the authority he has given us. It's a wonderful gift we've been provided with, you know, to experience his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. It's a wonderful also opportunity to deepen our understanding together today, right? So we all gonna be listening. We all gonna be in, uh, getting into it. Um, as George has already stated earlier in today's study, we will be looking in several key points, which fall within the following major key points regarding the power of prayer. Now, the reason why we say it again is for you guys to understand the order of it, right? So the first one is importance of prayer, learning of prayer, praying in and with the spirit. And then number four reasons for unanswered prayer. Number five, effective prayer. Right. So we encourage you to re-listen and study these um, because even though they are just, again, we say it, introduction. So it's not really that much in depth, uh, simple, but very powerful key for us to understand and manifest it in our journey, um, life journey, right? Uh, we're going to start our study now. So the first one is importance of prayer. Now, according to Eastern Bible um, Dictionary of Prayer, prayer is conversing with God. It's the intercourse, communication, connection, interchange of the soul with God, not in con con uh, contemplation or meditation, but in direct address to him, a direct access. Yeah, it's not about being eloquent in our words. Thou say the Lord, you know. Um, what truly matters with prayer is that our prayers come from the heart, filled with confident and importantly aligned with God's will. Now, prayer is essential in our journey of faith, like we've talked about, right? It's not just an option. So it's not like I can, um, it's an option if I, I don't like praying, so I don't pray. But it's a vital part of our walk with him. It's a communication, like I said before. Now, while there are many forms of prayer, today we will focus on the powerful practice of praying in and with the Spirit. Let's read our first um, verse. You want to read that? 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. So 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, reading from the New King James Version. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Mm. So what is the importance of prayer? As we said, this is a mini uh, topics that we have. And the importance of prayer, as we just covered, is that prayer is important because amongst other things, it is a vital connection with God, affirming our identity has his children and expect expecting but also experiencing his kingdom on earth it's not just communication it's a gift that strengthens our faith journey mm. amen so number two learning to pray now prayer is a beautiful expression from the heart like we've told uh talk about before and when we align it with the word of god as emphasized in uh, 1 john chapter 5 verse 14 it becomes even more powerful it ensures that our prayer resonates with his will, which allows uh, um, our, that prayer to truly benefit us. Now, God's words is designed to what? To uplift, support us, assuring us that he withhold no good things from our lives. So even as we are praying, it, it helps us to know we are basically declaring what God is declaring upon us, right? So by embracing this truth, we foster a deeper connection to his loving guidance and reaching our own journey, right? So can you read uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 from the AMPC? 1 John 5, 14. And this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege of boldness which we have in him. We are sure that if we ask anything, make any request according to his will, in agreement with his own plan, 
He listens to and hears us.、Mm. All right, number two. So, how do we learn to pray? We learn to pray as exemplified by Jesus, who taught his disciples. You can look at Luke eleven one to two, the Lord's Prayer, serving as a model for us on how to approach God in prayer. Amen. Now. This is further explained, like George said, in Luke chapter one,、uh, chapter eleven, verse one to two, when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. Can you read the verse? Luke eleven one to two. Then he was praying in a certain place, and when he stopped, one of his disciples said to him, "Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples." And he said to them, "When you pray, say, 'Our Father who is in heaven.'" Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, held holy and re- revered on earth as it is in heaven. Now it's、um, it's quite important because in this verse we see that it was a practice that was also done. If you read,、um, I think、uh, before that, it's a, it, you will understand that it was also a practice done by John the Baptist, reflecting a tradition that spans both from the Old and the New Testament. Right. So throughout Scripture, we see how God communicates His guidance. Thus, learning to pray with His Word, His guidance through His prophets, inspiring the restoration of path and healings of breaches. Now, the Lord's Prayer is a model Jesus provided, demonstrating how to effectively pray by incorporating God's words and intention.、Um, I like、um, this guy、um, uh, quote of this guy、uh, Ben. Zumbano, he puts it as such: says Jesus was accommodating the disciples' need, and he understood that they needed a model to follow before the Holy Spirit could lead them on their own through His Spirit of prayer into Spirit-led praying on their own. Because we all know that when they asked for that, that was before、um, they had the encounter with Holy Spirit and praying tongue. Now let's keep going. Number three. Praying in and with the Spirit. Now that's two. Two. I've separated those two. We'll start with the number one. Praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit often expressed through speaking in tongues, is a powerful way to strengthen, according to the Word of God, our faith and help us to remain anchored in God's love. Right, because when you're praying in tongue, the Holy Spirit prays through you. So your prayer will will be from God's love, will be from the point of view of God praying. You know what I mean? What God is praying for you, right? So when we engage in this form of prayer, we remind ourselves that God is actively working in us, for us, and through us. Right, so in us when God to edify us and and all that for us when we don't know what word to say and 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 the Holy Spirit um um bring forth the utterance um as we are praying in tongue and through us when sometimes God will say, oh can you pray for so and so and you don't know what to pray right now this help us set aside our thoughts when we pray in tongue so our spirit can connect deeply with the Father. Now, if you read it in,、uh, if you read that in Romans chapter eight, verse twenty-six from the NKJV version, can you read it? Romans eight twenty-six. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but with the Spirit, but the Spirit, sorry, Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, now this inspires inspires us inspires us to lean on the Holy Spirit who lovingly guides our prayer, right? So now we're going to go to the second part of it, which is praying with the Spirit. What praying with the Spirit require us to? It's different. It requires to pray with understanding of the Word of God, right? Understanding the Word of God then enriches our prayers and aligns them with His divine will. How do we know that something is the will of God for our life? Is is when we can align it with His Word, 
So as we pray with the Spirit, it requires us to understanding of the Word of God. Now, this guidance helps us to avoid praying from a place of flesh. In some uh, cases, or Pentecostal uh, case, you know, when you hear people say, oh, they're doing witchcraft <laughs> instead of praying the right thing, because it's not, um, how do you call it, aligned with the Word of God. So it helps us to steer clear of any tendencies that could lead us away from His truth. Now, that is confirmed in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 from the AMPC version we are reading. 1 Corinthians 14, 15 from the Amplified Classic. Then what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that is within me. But I will also pr pray intelligently with my mind and understanding. I will sing with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that is within me but I will sing intelligently with my mind and understanding also. That's confirming that. So God, the, the, the cool thing about it, and I know I always say, that, how good is that that we are being equipped? I always say it and I always say it because it is a truth. How great is our God that he has equipped us with the gift necessary for effective prayer, including knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It comes with prayer, where the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our, through our understanding of the word of God, you don't pray for, for example, babe, you don't pray and say, um, for, so, um, for A, for example, but you use uh, the prayer that is responded to B for A right but when you do something and you you know what your target is you will pray in a way that will hit the bullseye in another word right so that's where praying with understanding with the knowledge and wisdom of god comes in when we acknowledge these truths we open ourselves to be guided by the spirit of god allowing our words to flow with incredible power thus you know hitting bullseye when you're praying Hopefully it makes sense. And that is further confirmed in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Do you want to read it? Ephesians 1, 17 in the Amplified Classic. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insights into mysteries and secrets, in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. Right. Number four. Number four is reasons for unanswered prayer right the there are several insightful reasons why prayers may go unanswered and together we're going to explore some of the most common ones it's not all it's some of them one of the key reasons we may experience unanswered prayers is when we overlook the truth found in god's word refusing to hear the truth yes God is God is um, is not going to force us to um, hear the truth. That's why He says, "If you have, those who have ears, let them hear." Right? Um, we're going to read it uh, from. Uh, we're going to read uh, a verse corresponding to that from Proverbs chapter twenty-eight, verse nine. Proverbs twenty-eight, verse nine, Amplified Classic. He who turns away his ear from hearing the law of God and man, even his prayer, is an abomination, hateful and revolting to God. That's right. So basically what it, 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 it means is, again, there needs to be understanding because through the understanding of the word of God, you will understand if, you're, if what you're praying is of the truth of God. And if you refuse the truth that is being said unto you by God or through his word, and you keep praying, you will, it will not be answered. Number two is unbelief. Unbelief can create obstacles in our lives, much like a barrier that hinders us from embracing the blessing God has for us. It's like, it's like um, a baby who's um, hungry and is crying, right? And, and you're like, I'm, I'm, you're giving a bottle, right? But they, they're not grabbing to, 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 to reach it, to take that bottle. They just keep crying within themselves, having like, no, I don't know if it's that's food. I don't know if that's food or I don't believe that's food. So they keep pushing it, you know? Because they don't realize, babies, they don't realize what food you're giving to them. What is food until you just say, hey, you know, this is food. Eat it. It's the same way. <laughs> um, yes, I'm a mom of three. Three kids. So <laughs> um, we will uh, correspond that to Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 to 20. Matthew 17, 19 to 20 in the Amplified Classic. Then the disciples came to Jesus and asked pri privately, why could we not drive it out? He said to them, because of the littleness of your faith, that is your lack of firmly relying trust. 
For truly I say to you, if you have faith that is living like a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to yonder place, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. Wow. Unbelief. Next one, willful stubbornness. It can make us resistant and less open to embracing God's wonderful plan for us. It's such a simple thing. Um, we'll get um, the confirmation from it from Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 12 to 13. Jeremiah 16, 12 to 13, again in the Amplified Classic. And because you have done worse than your fathers, for behold, every one of you walks after the stubbornness of his own evil heart, so that you do not listen to and obey me. Therefore, I will cast you out of this land of Judah into the land of the Babylonians. Neither you nor your fathers have known and there you will serve other gods day and night, for I will show you no favor there. Mm. That in itself is another preaching. We'll keep going though. Um, next one is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness can feel like a trap we create for ourselves. It fosters a sense of pride that pulls us away from our authentic self and our relationship with God. By holding on to grudges, we risk missing out on the peace and connection we truly desire. Just as Jesus forgave us, we are invited to extend that same grace to others. Mark chapter 11, verse 25 to 26 from the AMPC version. Mark 11, 25 to 26. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him and let it drop, leave it and let it go. In order that your father who is in heaven may also forgive you and your own failings and shortcomings and let them drop. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your failings and shortcomings. Next one, presumption and pride. Now the dictionary of Bible theme describe presumption as a form of self-confidence which makes overconfident assumption concerning one's importance and rights. In another word, to proceed without proper authority or consentment, assuming that, and I'm sure all of us has fallen into that, assuming that God is somewhat required to endorse your chosen endeavors. It's like, you know, this is how I want the solution to be, Lord. Bless the solution, Lord. In, in, in the short version way of it. Um, to confirm that, let's read on Luke chapter 18, verse 10 to 14 from the AMPC. It's just a little story um, um, in the Bible. Luke 18, 10 to 14. Two men went up into the temple enclosure to pray. The one a, uh, a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee took his stand ostentatiously and began to pray thus before and with himself. God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of men, extortioners, robbers, swindlers, unrighteous in heart and life, adulterous, and even like this tax collector here. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I gain. But the tax collector, merely standing at a distance, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but kept striking his breast, saying, O oh God, be favorable. Be gracious, be merciful to me, especially wicked sinner that I am. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified, forgiven and made upright and in right standing with God, rather than the other man. For everyone who exalts himself will be ex humbled, humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. exalted. Wonderful story, isn't it? And... Uh Lastly, we're going to look at effective prayer. So this is like um, some key points on it and a practical point of it. How then to pray effective prayer? If all the things that we've just talked to you about, how do we go about, right? And, and like, we, like we talked about before, Jesus taught how to pray so that there is understanding and, and, and in it as well. So we also, though you, you hear us sometimes say, oh, we, um, George has done a lot of declaration nights and we've done a lot of those kind of prayers and um, sometimes ask, well, you know, it's, it's, if it's coming from the heart, why do you have to teach? This is a reason Jesus did it. Uh, John the Baptist did it and others. Now we're going to give you some key point over it on how to do effective prayer and you can cater it to your needs, right? This is not, this is a model. 
This is not a requirement as such, like you're forced into it. It's between you and God in your relationship, right? And the first one is this. Effective prayer begins with directing our hearts to the Father in Jesus' name. Now, that one is a requirement. <laughs> this approach helps us connect deeply and purposely in our conversation with God. Why? Let's read it. John chapter 14, verse 13 to 15 from the AMPC. John 14, 13 to 15. And I will do, I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name as presenting all that I am, so that the Father may be glorified and extolled in through the Son. Yes, I will grant, I myself will do for you whatever you shall ask in my name as presenting all that I am. And after listening to this verse, I'm sure all of you will be wise to say every prayer you do say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask. Next one. Effective prayer must come from a sincere heart. You want to read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. All right. Hebrews 10, 22 in the Amplified Classic. Let us all come forward and draw near with true, honest, and sincere hearts in unqualified assurance and absolute conviction engendered by faith by that leaning of the entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness, having our hearts sprinkled and purified from a guilty, evil conscience and our bodies cleansed with pure water. Amen. Now, next one is effective prayer holds an unhesitant submission to God's sovereign will. When we choose to submit to God, we open our hearts to the guidance of his spirit, embracing his truth. Now, this allows us to engage actively in powerful prayer, like we spoke before, using his word, which also yield results that never return voice. Because the, the word of God says his word is yes and amen. Um, let's confirm it by reading Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 in the Amplified Classic. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not reply, rely sorry, on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge Him, and He will direct and make straight and plain your paths. Amen. Next one, effective prayer must also be offered in faith. It's it's important to approach prayer with trust as our faith is what pleases God, according to the word of God, right? So when we pray, our belief demonstrates that we trust. He hears us and has already begun to answer our requests, right? So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 from the AMPC. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. Amen. Next one, effective prayer. I think that's the last one. Effective prayer must be accompanied with thanksgiving and praise. Now, offering thanksgiving and praise in our prayer allow us to focus on God's goodness, power, and wisdom. It serves as a beautiful reminder for all he has done for us and reassures, reassures us that he is actively present in our lives. Now, this practice not only deepens our gratitude, but also acknowledge his sovereignty over all things. That's why in the model of um, the prayer of our father's prayer is like our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then it's finished for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Right. Um, we're going to confirm that from Colossians chapter 3, verse 13 from the AMPC. Colossians 3, verse 17. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Amplified classic. Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and in dependence upon his person, giving praise to God the Father through him. Now, in today's study, we covered quite a bit. So in today's study, the power of prayer, embracing God's presence and authority, we covered many key points, which fall within the major key points. We covered the importance of prayer. Learning to pray. We covered praying in and with the Spirit. Reasons for unanswered prayer. And we covered effective prayer. 
So if you arrived late for the study, we encourage you to re-listen and study as we covered some very simple yet very powerful key points in relation to the power of prayer. In the powerful true words of Charles Spurgeon, if a church is to be what it ought to be for the purposes of God, we must train it in the holy art of prayer. And I would like to add that with a conclusive quote from Thomas Robinson, prayer is like the dove that Noah sent forth, which bless him not only when it returned with an olive um, leaf in its mouth, but when it never returned at all. Think about that. Amen. Amen. All right. If you are new here, if this is the first time you're listening and you've never heard about the Christian God in this manner, this is not a coincidence. This is a divine appointment. I want to uh, let you know that in God's word, it says in 1 John 5, 4 to 5, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. So where are you putting your faith? matters are you putting your faith in money are you putting your faith in your work are you putting your faith in the immigration process are you putting your faith in the government are you putting your faith in your parents where you put your faith matters and it goes on to say the word of god who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that jesus is the son of god oh george there is buddha jesus <laughs> is it the, oh god george there is this jesus there is only one way, one truth, and one life, and Amen. that is Jesus. I'm not being radical here. The truth is the truth. There is no your truth, my truth. That's all absolute nonsense. There is only one, one way, truth. one truth, and one life, and that is through Jesus Christ. His word goes on to say, it goes on to say, John 3, 16 to 17, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm -hmm. that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So what do I have to do, George? Well, 1 John 1, 9 goes on to say very clearly, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, here it is, George, the word sin. You know, I'm, I'm as good as the, the guy next door. I'm as good as that person. I'm actually better than my parents ever were. It, you know, we, are, we don't get measured by other people. No, that's not our standard. Jesus is our standard. Amen. And by Jesus' standard, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We all deserve hell. But because of what Jesus done on that cross, he paid a big price for it, but it's a free gift to us. It's called grace. So what do you need to do? You confess with your mouth. Look, on the screen it says very clearly, Romans 10, 9 to 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then it goes on to say, it doesn't finish there, in Titus 3, verse 5, Ephesians 2, verse 8, Acts 1, verse 8, amongst others. Then he saves us, so you confess with your mouth out loud. You ask Jesus to become your Lord and Savior. You repent of your sins, and you choose to believe that, Jesus, that God raised Jesus from the dead in your place, and now you are saved, you are washed clean, you are cleansed as white as snow as the Word of God tells us, but it doesn't end there. As I said, all these other verses down at the bottom says, then he saves us by grace through faith, the gift of God washing away our sins and giving us the new joy of the indwelling Holy Spirit. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. What is that? What that is, is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit and fire. We call that in our circles, the baptism of of Holy Spirit and fire is when we invite Holy Spirit, God himself, the very Spirit of God to come and live inside of you. You become the church, you become the synagogue, you become the temple of God, and he will dwell in you forever. He will guide you, protect you, correct you, comfort you. Uh, he will lead you through your life. And he comes bearing gifts. He comes bearing spiritual gifts that he wants to equip you, to empower you with, so that you learn throughout this life journey here on earth to be the 
uh, to not only be his ambassador, as his word says, but to fulfill the calling that he has upon your life. Every single one of us have a specific calling. Are you ready? We're going to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you haven't invited Jesus, do that right now. And we're going to invite Holy Spirit to come and baptize us. Amen? Amen. Let's do this. Do you want to do that? You do it. All right, Lord, I thank you right now. Holy Spirit, we are hungry and thirsty. As your word says, those that are hungry and thirsty shall be filled. Yes. So, Lord, we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come fill us afresh, a fresh baptism of your spirit and fire. Light up a fire in us that cannot be quenched. As your word says, that our God is a consuming fire. Come, yes, Lord. set us alight that the world will come and watch us burn for you. Yes, Lord. Lord, we speak revival. We declare revival in and through us. Yes, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, as it is in heaven, let yes. it be here on earth. In and through us. Yes, for Lord. your glory, Jesus. Yes, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and amen. Man. All right. Some of you may be experiencing some unusual uh, symptoms. Don't, don't worry. It's part of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some of you may be may maybe talk in this gibberish language what am i saying that's a holy, holy language. language of god it talks in the bible about this that it's a sign of the baptism of the holy spirit it's a good thing so communicate in this language as often as you can uh we spoke about it today we spoke mm -hmm. about right in the spirit what it does to you um, also, some of you may be feeling a heat. Some of you felt like a whole massive weight just lifted off you, like you've been unburdened by what was. Oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> I'll pray for you afterwards. <laughs> that, it, it, anyways, all this um, has gone. That nonsense, it's gone, baby. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's normal. Some of you feel like there's a, 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 a electricity, electricity. Electricity. That must be a new thing, electricity. Electricity running through your body, or just a nice warmth, or just a nice peace. It's the very presence of God. Embrace it. Enjoy it. And, um, and also get connected with the church. It's very important that you get connected in person with a church, a Bible-teaching, Holy Spirit-filled church, wherever you are. If you can't, for whatever reason, if you're living in a country where there's um, very fearful, tyr tyrannical overlords, trying to stop you from doing that, there's always the internet. You can do, you, you can get connected with churches online. You can get connected with uh, home fellowships online. There's always a way to do that. But it's very, very important that you do connect with a church. Remember, the church is not perfect. We are the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is, is your perfect. Standard. Is your standard. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I encourage you to hang around. And also this brings us to our second part of the program, and which we call... Before we go there, um, if you've been blessed by this, please check out all those places that we have lots of more materials. If you're in a church that needs help with materials and all that, please feel free. Right? These are free. Right? Those places we have audios and all that, these are free. That's what she's talking about, right? Yeah, these are free, right? Um, she's not talking about the what do you call it? The water fountain things. She's not talking about the no, yeah, I'm not talking about that. I'm about those links up there, these right? Are free, these. This is not free. neither is she free. She's mine. She belongs to me forever. <laughs> okay. So that um. Okay. All jokes aside, these are their resources for the churches for anybody who wants, and you you can also share it. Send link. If you can't go out and evangelize, they, nowadays we are so blessed. We have technology, we have messages, we have WhatsApp, we have all those things that you can actually send a link. A link can bring a different to someone's life. So share it. If you've been blessed by it, share it, right? Don't keep things for you. God has enough blessing for everybody to go forward, all right? Amen. That's what I want to say. All right. This brings us to the collective, collective where we spend time with those that are watching, those that are listening, and we pray, prophesy, whatever Holy Spirit leads us to do. I encourage you, if you haven't already, to write down any any of your specific prayer requests that you mm -hmm. have so that we can see them on the fast Facebook live chat section. Yes. And I encourage you to hang around as well if this is your first time. And drop us a line. Let us know where you're from, where you saw us for the first time. It's encouraging oh, for all you. of us. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. All right. This brings us to the collective. collective.